I had around 150 street fights. So that's probably why I didn't do too bad in boxing. Mm. 500 street fights and you can consider yourself a legitimate tough guy. Hey guys, if you clicked on this video, I am pretty sure you want to know what a street fighter is. This definition is much more complex than people realize. So, in the next couple of minutes, I am going to give you guys the most complete definition you will ever find of the term street fighter. So, let's start with the most common definition which is a person that fights on the streets. <laughs> And I bet that this is also your understanding when you hear this term. Well, guys, I don't agree with this definition for it's at least incomplete. And I'll explain right now. Let's take, for example, Average Joe, a normal guy that had like three altercations in his entire 30 years life. He gets now in an argument with someone on the street, at the office, anywhere. Uh, we have sort of a problem here. Yeah, you. And this argument turns into a fight. Is Average Joe now suddenly a street fighter? I don't think so. Does it matter if he wins or loses? He must be trained to apply a certain style of fighting in order to be a street fighter. If he is armed, is still considered a street fight. How you going to die? You see, guys, there are a lot of aspects that need to be addressed in order for a clear definition of the term street fighter. I always liked the power of example. I think it's one of the best ways to clearly make a point. So, Let's take example number one, Mike Tyson, one of the greatest ring fighters ever. Aside being arguably the best boxer of all time, before turning professional, he had an impressive number of street fights, like around 150. There someone doubts his statement? I don't think so. Is he a street fighter? No, he's a former boxer. But I believe at that time, in that specific period of time, when he had that impressive number of confrontations, he was a street fighter. Being a real street fighter for a longer period of time is very hard, almost impossible, 
even for a born fighter like Mike Tyson. And I'm going to give you example number two. Karateka. I mean, it's not like when you practice a contact sport. Let's say Karate. Yes, you practice your style, you regularly do your training, participate in some tournaments if you want to prove yourself and yes, you can be called a Karateka or any other term you prefer that describes a person practicing this type of martial art. I mean, there is a pattern in this style of life, if you understand my meaning. And now I will show you the difference between a karateka and a street fighter. Let's say a fight happens on the streets, of course. But what kind of fight? The confrontation may involve dealing with one opponent or with multiple opponents, armed or unarmed, trained or untrained, smart or stupid, and so on. I think you get the picture. Now this situation itself creates a multitude of scenarios for a street fight. What I am trying to say is that there is no pattern for a street confrontation. Especially in a street fight, the chaos factor is like bodies are flying, there's bad timing. The outcome is unknown, no matter how trained, tough or smart you think you are. And I said that many times in my other videos. I mean, if you're a smart guy, train yourself not necessarily in a martial art, although it is preferable for self-defense. But in any type of sport, like, for example, weightlifting. Of course, your chances to win a possible conflict on the street are higher. But this is the point I'm trying to make. Imagine this scenario. Let's take, for example, a very good ring fighter. Let's pick this time an MMA practitioner. This guy gets into a difference of opinion with someone, which leads to a fight. The MMA practitioner is uh, pretty sure of himself, being trained and all that. The other guy pulls out a knife, or suddenly one or many of his friends arrive. Do you see now my point? That's why you can never know how a street fight will end. And that's why the definition of the term street fighter is very hard to express. So if a person brings a weapon to a street fight, is he a street fighter? I don't think so. I believe he's just a simple aggressor. I mean, if you're gonna slap a woman or a kid on the street. Of course, I hope you will never do. Just saying, are you a street fighter? Of course not. Quite the contrary. 
So here comes the only correct and complete definition of a street fighter. A street fighter is a person trained or untrained in any sport that fights for real, most times in self-defense, in any type of environment, responding to the attack in a proportional manner. If, for example, he is attacked by one guy, he also fights alone. If the attacker is unarmed, he fights also barehanded. He arms himself only if the situation demands it. Like when he is outnumbered or the opponent carries some sort of a weapon. And, of course, if the situation allows him. And, most important, this person has a significant number of street fights in a certain period of time. Like, for example, 10 fights in one year. Don't get me wrong, sometimes you can have even 10 fights a month or multiple fights in the same day. No one can be a street fighter for a long time. Street fighting is a very dangerous activity that can be placed, let's say, as a sport, just to make a point, between combat sports and the gladiators fights. More dangerous than a combat sport, obviously, that has rules and a referee, and less dangerous than the fights in the Colosseum. A street brawl can end very fast with the death of one of the participants. Just like some of the gladiators' fights. Aside the obvious dangers of armed fights, there is a very common threat that few people are aware. This can go both ways. Punching someone in the face, especially in the chin area, this attack requires no special skills. Even an ordinary guy can achieve this if he has a little bit of accuracy. In this case, the opponent goes down, bumps the back of his head against the concrete and the commotion is very possible to occur. You know what I hate most in anything in street fights is when the dude's heads bounce off the concrete. Ah, oh, brutal. And many times death happens in situations like this. And now guys, I'm going to put a link below to a street fight that I had in which I ran into this element and a tragedy could have happened. So you guys can hopefully learn something from someone that actually went through that situation.